Hello and welcome to Real Biz. I'm Rebecca Jarvis in New York City and here's what's on our radar. Every entrepreneur wants to create the next, well you fill in the blank, it's Facebook, Google, maybe SpaceX or even Sephora. But just a handful of us actually do it. What's the secret to making it happen? Where do you even begin? For the answer, we here at Real Biz went to Peter Thiel. In his new book, Zero to One, Notes on Startups, How to Build the Future, Thiel has one simple answer. Do something totally different. The billionaire investor is widely known as one of the most disruptive thinkers on the planet. He co-founded PayPal, was the first investor in Facebook, and is now seeding some of the most successful startups today from LinkedIn to Airbnb and Yelp. And here's our conversation at the Forbes 30 Under 30 conference in Philadelphia. Why this book? Why now? Zero to One came out of this class that I taught at Stanford in 2012. One of the students, Blake Masters, took these notes. He posted them on the internet. The notes went viral. Hundreds of thousands of people uh, read them. And we thought it would be uh, great to try to distill it into a very compact message. And uh, so we produced this uh, Zero to One book. And it, it contains basically everything I've learned about business, technology, starting companies in, in the last uh, decade and a half in Silicon Valley. What are the three biggest takeaways you hope someone reading this book gets? The single biggest takeaway is to really rethink the nature of competition in all its forms. As an entrepreneur, you want to aim for monopoly. Uh, that's how you create a great business. And so you want to be really differentiated from all the other people doing similar things. You don't want to open a restaurant. You don't want to be the fourth online pet food company or the 10th thin film solar panel company. Great companies are one of a kind. That's the, that's the overarching theme of the book. And then it's sort of a whole series of different exercises to encourage people to think about the world in different ways. You know, ask questions like what great business is nobody starting? What do I believe to be true that nobody agrees with me on? That, uh, that get you in that mindset where you could start uh, one of these zero to one companies. What great businesses aren't getting started? I've done, uh, I've looked a lot at the biotech space because it feels like there's a lot that could be done and it's a space people are pretty skeptical of. There are a lot of barriers to entry there. there are a lot of the challenges. biggest one being money. It takes yes. money to get into that space. And so, so there are all sorts of challenges, but I'm always attracted to things that uh, people think are very hard to do for some reason. Clean tech uh, fell apart uh, in the last uh, number of years, but I sort of wonder if maybe the contrarian thing is to look at that a little bit more. But I think much more of it is being unique, one-of-a-kind companies that, um, that are always solving some very idiosyncratic problem that people, for whatever reason, have not thought of. Seatbelt buckles. Well, that, that was solved a while back, but yes, that was... But they're not easy. They're still... Have you ever tried to get into a car with your grandparents? Uh, not, not recently, but... It always requires buckling their seatbelts for them. Well, the, there, <laughs> or a kid. Yes, but well, there are a lot of things that um, umbrellas aren't easy either. It seems like they never couldn't fold properly. But I, it may be. Uh, They're may, twenty bucks. It may be. It may be very hard to reinvent umbrellas or seatbelts. So there are are these things where there are lots of things that are not perfect, but uh, it's still not obvious how they can be improved. So you you want to find something where it can be improved dramatically relative to the existing standards, not just where things are. Are, are broken in some way. You, you never want to take your bearings from uh, things that are messed up. Napster was a disruptive company. It set up to disrupt the music industry. Um, and it did change things, but it basically went out of business. So I think it's always better to just take your bearings from doing something totally new. One of the big messages in the book is to think for yourself, to question if you're not going with the herd. You're thinking, you're asking, does this make sense? And is the answer as simple as the one right in front of me? Yes, and, um, and certainly um, it's, this is always very easy to tell people to think for themselves. It's always really hard to do. There is something about human nature that's deeply imitative. It's how kids learn language from their parents. It's how culture gets transmitted in our society. But it also leads to all kinds of crazy peer pressures in you know, junior high school and high school. It leads to financial bubbles in the markets. Uh, it leads to the insanity of crowds. And so um, thinking for yourself, I think, is always uh, really valuable but uh, really hard. Your book is filled with advice and smart things for startups to consider. And you talk about the danger of going out for funding too soon. If people give you money, you should probably always take it. But it's good to have some idea what you want to do with it. And if you, if you raise too much money, there is always a risk that you spend it unwisely. And so um, it's, in general, it's a problem you want to have, but uh, it's a problem to be aware of. What's the worst pitch you've received? One was, uh, um, it was a yellow manila envelope. It was a one-page letter from a fictional Wikipedia entry in 2020. The person uh, 
had become a billionaire. They had a crazy history. They'd spent their last $175 to go to a conference where they met me, and I invested in their in their startup. It and actually so it was, sounds like a college application. So it was it was like. Uh, it was like somewhat disturbing, but it was, it was, it was clever. <laughs> well, they're trying to be clever because how do you get through? If, if I'm somebody who wants to get through to you, how would I do it? Find somebody I know and trust and have them make an introduction. So it is, it is, it is a version of the social or business networking thing. That's, that's what really works. Thank you so much for joining us for Real Biz. We want to hear from you. Like us, tweet us at Rebecca Jarvis and comment below. What do you think? Is it best to be a monopoly? Let us know. From the ABC News studios in New York City, I'm Rebecca Jarvis. Have a great day.